This episode is brought to you by Tools and Weapons, a podcast hosted by Microsoft Vice Chair and President Brad Smith. In it, global leaders discuss the promise and peril of the digital age, from environmental sustainability and cybersecurity to ethical AI. Guests like journalist Kara Swisher and Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella share lessons from their past to reframe some of society's toughest challenges and seek new solutions. Follow Tools and Weapons with Brad Smith on Spotify now. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2444. Saving and Retirement, What You Should Do Now, and Starting a Roth IRA for a Teen, both by Ryan Larson of FirstLineFind.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Now let's get right to today's post as we optimize your life. Saving in Retirement, What You Should Do Now by Ryan Larson of FirstLineFind.com. If you've already retired and realize you don't have enough money in savings, what should you do? Here are some actionable items that retirees should do now to help build up your savings in retirement. Number one, financial planning. Financial planning and removing fear from your decision-making process is really important in retirement. If you realize you don't have enough money and you've worked the 40 quarters necessary or have worked the 10 years required to receive a benefit from Social Security, then making the most educated decision on when to take your Social Security benefit is one aspect to help you potentially improve your situation. Social Security, the way they think of it, they think your benefits start at your FRA or full retirement age based on your year of birth. All they're doing is penalizing you down for taking it before your FRA, or they're simply rewarding you for delaying it and waiting. The reason why this is important is your social security acts one way from 62 to your full retirement age, and then acts a completely different way from your full retirement age until age 70. Making sure you know the ins and outs of social security and how it works can improve your financial situation greatly. Number two, budgeting. Budgeting is the most important thing we all need to do, no matter what financial stage we're in. It's more important when you're retired because you're handcuffed with a fixed income. Understanding what's going out and what's coming in is a good first step in how to develop savings in retirement. Know your income in retirement, then manage your debt. If there's a shortfall, differentiate the expenses from discretionary and non-discretionary spending. This is the time to cut down on lifestyle spending until you have enough savings that will cover three to six months of your expenses. Number three, continue to invest. Being retired doesn't mean you have to stop making money. Sure, you can pick up a hobby that pays or a part-time job. What we're really talking about is investing. Investing doesn't stop when you retire. If you have a nice cushion of emergency cash and then some, consider investing that lazy money into strategies that can provide you moderate growth, such as fixed income products in the form of online high-yield savings accounts to a little more robust strategies like structured notes. The latter can provide you an element of principal protection with a growth component. And number four, live a healthy lifestyle. Our final suggestion on how to build savings in retirement isn't about monetary gain, but more of a wellness gain. Staying healthy in retirement is the best money saver. According to the Fidelity Retiree Healthcare Cost Estimate, an average retired couple age 65 in 2022 may need approximately $315,000 saved after tax to cover healthcare expenses in retirement. Healthcare is one of the largest expenses in retirement. You can save expenses by staying healthy, exercising, and keeping with a nutritional diet. But don't just think of the physical, think of the mental as well. Finding your purpose while in retirement is key for your well-being and your mental health. According to Transamerica's 2017 retirement study, 97% of retirees with a strong sense of purpose were generally happy, compared with 76% without that sense. So as the old adage states, one apple a day keeps the doctor away from your fixed income wallet. Starting a Roth IRA for a Teen by Ryan Larson of FirstLineFind.com. 
Want to give your child or grandchild a financial head start? A Roth IRA might be a choice to consider. Keep listening to learn more about how this may benefit both of you. Rules for setting up a Roth IRA. If your teen has an earned income, you may be able to set up a Roth IRA for them. For example, if your 15-year-old has earned $6,500 at a summer job, you can set up an account for them up to $6,500, the maximum annual Roth IRA contribution. The amount cannot exceed the teen's income. Keep in mind that the money you contribute to the Roth IRA can count as a gift within your $17,000 yearly gift tax exclusion, or $34,000 for a married couple. Looking ahead to the future. If money is withdrawn from a Roth IRA before age 59 and a half, a 10% federal tax penalty may apply. There is, however, a notable exception. Up to $10,000 of investment earnings can be taken out of a Roth IRA at any time if the money is used to buy a first home. In this instance, the IRS may waive the early withdrawal penalty. Should your teenager become a parent someday, a portion of those Roth IRA assets might also be utilized to pay college tuition costs for themselves or their child. This article is for informational purposes only. It's not a replacement for real life advice, so make sure to consult your tax professional before modifying any Roth IRA strategy. Tax-free and penalty-free withdrawals can also be taken under circumstances other than the first home purchases, such as the owner's death. The original Roth IRA owner is not required to take minimum annual withdrawals. To qualify for the tax-free and penalty-free withdrawal of earnings, the teenager must meet a five-year holding requirement and occur after age 59 and a half. Greater earning potential, thanks to the magic of compound interest. Setting up a Roth IRA for a teenager is a great way to introduce them to basic financial concepts, such as compound interest. Giving your teen a hands-on learning experience may help them understand the value of saving for the future. You may also be facilitating the development of your children's or grandchildren's financial habits. There are a few things to consider when setting up a custodial Roth IRA. Setting up a Roth IRA for a minor is often referred to as a custodial IRA. Until the child is able to take it over, you act as the custodian of the account. Individual state laws determine when the minor child is able to take over management of the Roth IRA for themselves. A tax professional can provide guidance that may help ensure that you and your minor child are following all federal and state regulations. You just listened to the post titled, Saving in Retirement, What You Should Do Now, and Starting a Roth IRA for a Teen, both by Ryan Larson of FirstLineFind.com. This episode is brought to you by Google. The Google Cybersecurity Certificate provides the necessary skills to begin a career in cybersecurity. Visit safety.google forward slash cyber workforce today. This episode is brought to you by Tools and Weapons, a podcast hosted by Microsoft Vice Chair and President Brad Smith. In it, global leaders discuss the promise and peril of the digital age, from environmental sustainability and cybersecurity to ethical AI. Guests like journalist Kara Swisher and Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella share lessons from their past to reframe some of society's toughest challenges and seek new solutions. Follow Tools and Weapons with Brad Smith on Spotify now. Starting a custodial investment account for a child is a fantastic way to set them up for financial success. Though I recently saw a discussion on a financial forum that led me to believe the issue isn't so black and white. A parent was asking for advice about how to manage a custodial account now that their kid was about to turn 18. The concern was that this kid was wildly irresponsible, and they feared access to this money that has been saved and invested diligently for years might not be the best idea. I really felt for this parent. They outlined all the ways they tried to teach their child about money, work ethic, and responsibility over the years, but it fell on deaf ears. Unfortunately, when you're managing a custodial account, the fact of the matter is that it's not your money. When that kid turns 18, they have full access to do with that money as they please. The advice from the other parents in the forum was to let it go. If the kid wasted the money and didn't follow their parents' advice, 
at least they're learning these lessons at a young age. While it can be frustrating to watch, most of us have made poor decisions with money at some point in our lives, but hopefully we learned something from the experience. But that will do it for the Monday episode. Have a great start to your week, and I'll be back tomorrow as usual, where your optimal life awaits.